India's emergence as a confident geopolitical actor, assertive in diplomacy, resilient in defense, and ambitious in global leadership has been underpinned by a quiet revolution. At the heart of this transformation lies the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, a civilian agency whose contributions have increasingly extended beyond scientific exploration into the realms of national security and strategic autonomy. The best known for its lunar and interplanetary missions, ISRO has played a pivotal role in strengthening India's defense architecture. It has built and launched a constellation of satellites that power secure military communications, provide high-resolution imagery for surveillance, and offer critical data for real-time border monitoring. Satellites like the Cartosat series enable detailed mapping and intelligence gathering, while the RISAT family delivers radar-based imaging, capable of peering through clouds and darkness, vital for operations in all weather conditions and terrains. The GSAT-7 and GSAT-6 communication satellites form the digital backbone of India's Tri-Services Command, allowing the Army, Navy and Air Force to communicate securely across vast distances. The successful launching of the IRNSS NAVIC system a regional satellite navigation system designed to reduce dependence on the American GPS has ensured that Indian Defence Forces retain uninterrupted access to location and timing data, even during conflict scenarios when foreign systems may be denied. In short, ISRO has become an enabling force multiplier for India's defence establishment, not by developing weapons, but by providing the critical infrastructure data and self-reliant technologies that modern warfare increasingly depends on. Here's the story of this silent revolution. In its early years, ISRO was often ridiculed. International media shared photos of rocket parts being transported on bullock carts and bicycles, using them as symbols to mock India's ambitions in space exploration. They framed it as a kind of primitive folly how could a poor country dare to dream of space? At home, the questions were no less harsh. Critics argued that a nation grappling with poverty and basic infrastructure challenges had no business pouring resources into rockets and satellites. What these voices failed to understand was the broader vision. ISRO wasn't just reaching for the stars. It was laying the groundwork for tools that would improve communication forecast the weather, enable telemedicine, and promote national integration. The very satellites once mocked turned out to be life-saving assets, helping predict cyclones, improve crop yields, and bring education and connectivity to India's most remote corners. Today, ISRO stands tall as a symbol of national pride, admired globally for achieving more with less. But the stager wasn't built overnight. The journey began humbly, yet audaciously. Fifty years ago, on April 19, 1975, India announced its arrival into the space age with the launch of its first satellite, Aryabhat. It was a moment of enormous pride for a newly independent nation still grappling with the aftershocks of colonialism. Back then, space was the domain of superpowers, before ISRO was even formed in 1969, only three countries had established space agencies. The United States with NASA, the Soviet Union with RVSN, and France with CNES. But India was undeterred. Following the 1971 war, India's ties with the Soviet Union deepened, opening doors to collaboration in sectors like space exploration. Aryabhatta, built entirely in India, was launched aboard a Soviet Cosmos 3N rocket. Though the satellite suffered a power failure soon after launch, it proved a vital point. Indian engineers were capable of designing and building space-worthy technology. The Soviet collaboration made that first step possible, but it also highlighted India's dependence on foreign launch systems, something ISRO was determined to change. That determination defined the next phase of ISRO's growth. During the 1980s and 90s, ISRO focused on developing its own launch vehicles. 
early efforts with the SLV and ASLV faced failures, but each setback taught valuable lessons. These culminated in the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV, a game changer known for its reliability and cost efficiency. The PSLV didn't just serve India, it earned global respect by successfully launching foreign satellites, generating both prestige and revenue. But ISRO wasn't content with just launching lightweight payloads. It aimed higher, literally. To reach even greater heights, India needed a heavier launch system, the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, GSLV. This required cryogenic engine technology, which India initially tried to obtain from Russia. But the US intervened, citing the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR, and blocked the deal. Rather than give up, ISRO chose the harder path. Instead of backing down, it took on the Herculean challenge of developing cryogenic technology indigenously. And in 2014, GSLV D5, powered by a homegrown cryogenic engine, successfully launched. India had joined a small club of nations capable of sending heavy satellites into orbit, cementing ISRO's place among the world's top space agencies. With the foundation firmly laid, ISRO turned towards exploration beyond Earth. In 2008, India launched its first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. The mission made global headlines when it confirmed the presence of water molecules on the Moon, a breakthrough in planetary science and a proud moment for India's space program. But ISRO was not done surprising the world. Just five years later came a mission that captured the world's imagination. The Mars Orbiter Mission MOM, popularly known as Mangalyaan. Launched in 2013, Mangalyaan made India the first Asian country to reach Mars orbit and the first country in the world to do it on its maiden attempt. Even more astonishing was the cost, just $74 million. For comparison, the Hollywood film Gravity cost $100 million and The Martian cost around $108 million. ISRO had pulled off a real interplanetary mission for less than either of those fictional ones. The world took notice. ISRO earned a reputation for frugal engineering. And it wasn't just about cost efficiency. It was about capability. NASA's MAVEN mission to Mars launched the same year, cost about $671 million. The European Space Agency's Mars Express cost more than double what Mangalyan did. And yet, India's mission delivered vital scientific data demonstrating technical sophistication and strategic value. This quiet confidence has continued to define ISRO's approach, undeterred by the sneering contempt of Western media, which all too often cloaks its racism and insecurity in the language of satire and skepticism. In 2023, Chandrayaan-3 made India the first country to land near the moon's South Pole a region long considered unreachable. The Vikram lander and Pragyan rover transmitted invaluable data, once again proving ISRO's growing mastery over complex, high-precision missions. But even with these achievements, ISRO continues to push its limits. Now, it is preparing for its most ambitious project yet, human spaceflight. The Gaganyaan mission will send Indian astronauts, Vyomanauts, into low Earth orbit. The mission demands sophisticated life support systems, crew escape modules, and rigorous astronaut training. While global partners like Roscosmos are lending a hand, the core of the mission remains proudly Indian. From bullock carts to lunar landers, ISRO's journey is nothing short of extraordinary. It has achieved what few believed possible, not just reaching for the stars, but using them to transform life on Earth. And now, as the space race evolves, with private players entering the field, nations eyeing extraterrestrial resources, and artificial intelligence reshaping space missions, ISRO must navigate a more complex terrain. The future demands innovation, foresight, and above all, resilience. But if history is any guide, with its brilliant scientists and unwavering spirit, India is more than ready to script the next chapter in the global space story.